right in front of me the pillows mounted elevated elevated from the bed went up all the way to the ceiling so i was like whoa i was like they <laughs> happening youtube listen welcome back to my channel for those of you that don't know me my name is abs iggy make sure you subscribe to my channel right now make sure you give this a like and a thumbs up listen and make sure you spam my comments right before we get into this look i just need to apologize for my eyebrows they're also in isolation yeah not looking too good right now so this is a true story like all my story times um this must have happened last summer. I was with my ex at the time and um, she kept going on about trying edibles. Um, and I didn't really know what it was to be honest. Um, like, I don't smoke or nothing like that. So um, I didn't really know what to expect. Before actually making them, so we must have went onto YouTube and was watching this. I remember like this American guy talking about how to make it. And one thing that um, stood out for me was the fact that he said, okay, you can be high for like three days. With my ex, so she she lives in a house share with other housemates. Um, one of them, I think, I'm sure he was a crackhead, man. He was he was always like, his eyes were always red. He was always shaking, always itching, like, and ticking and that. He was a bit crazy. We didn't want to make sure anyone was home. And obviously we didn't kind of, you know, want to get in trouble. We must have been making it now. And I remember one of the first things we had to do was obviously like fry it um, in oil. And I remember... Women's was watching a YouTube tutorial on how to do it. They were basically like, oh, make sure you don't like overheat it because you'll burn it kind of thing. It didn't kind of smell too strong. So we weren't too sure we were doing it right. So we must have made these brownies now. And literally we made quite a lot of big batch. Now, from what we were reading and researching on YouTube about it before, um, we were told obviously just take a small bit, like a small piece, and then you kind of wait. I must have had half, my ex must have had half, went to her room now. And we're just chilling half an hour. Uh, went by and didn't really feel anything um nothing really happened it, i kind of felt fine so i was like you know what i'm gonna have the other half of it so at this point i had one full brownie um waited another uh, half an hour so about an hour went by and literally like i didn't feel anything and my ex is like you need to don't have any more i was like but i don't feel anything like so we thought we made it wrong um so i was calm like i was just chilling watching tv and everything and then I don't know what possessed me, but I decided to have two more blocks. So, and they were quite big. They were like this big. Right, so I had three in total. So six half slices. Yeah, I'm good at maths. Uh, after that, maybe about an hour later, I started like sitting there on the bed and the bed was kind of like just slowly rocking now. So slowly rocking this is slowly rocking i looked at my ex she looked at me she's like <laughs> the room is spinning i was like yeah it's kind of rocking still like what's going on like why is it rocking and then something happened on the tv that was funny i swear guys we were busting up like we were busting up it was like someone gave us some laughing guys like we were cracking up cracking up crack. we could have stopped laughing and we just looked at each other and i was looking at her and then as i was laughing like the room started shaking more so it started tilting like just like this and we just couldn't stop laughing literally for like half an hour to the point where like i was like scared because i was like i'm struggling to breathe because i'm laughing so much so um anyways as time went by so i remember i stood up right so let's set the scene now so we're in our room she was in the middle of doing my hair before we started this so i had half my hair came out half it out like this but worse um i just had boxes on as well and a vest um so I must have stood up and I started pacing around the room like this. Like, I just felt so aggressive. Like, honestly, like, I just felt like I wanted to, like, you know what I mean? Like, start fighting someone. Like, and I walked around the room like this, yeah. And my ex was like, Abby, <laughs> why are you walking around so much? I was like, yeah, what? <laughs> I'll come up, I'll fuck them up. I don't know who I was talking about referring to, but I was so angry. Like, I just started pacing around the room like, what? Like, no, like, he's gonna get it, he's gonna get it. And my ex was sitting there like, <laughs> Abby, why are you walking around the room? I was like, no, nah, man, what? Woo. I was like, babe, woo. yeah, woo. I was like, ah. and then I started like feeling quite itchy. And I looked in the mirror, but I was thinking, maybe it's my hair, like, my hair itching, does it, is it wash day? Like, and I started pacing still. Um, 
And then she was like to me, do you want to sit? I was like, no, I want to fight, you know, I want to fight. I'm ready to go, like, right now, bring someone to me right now. Um, and she just sat there, like, swaying. Like, I remember looking at her, she was, like, swaying like this. Um, I went and sat down. Oh, my God. From zero to 100. So when I was sitting down now on the bed, I was kind of sat, like, half up. So my leg, one of my legs was stretched over the bed, so my left leg. And I remember my right leg was on the bed. And I weren't leaning against, like, the bedpost or nothing. I was just sitting there. And there was pillows there. And then I was like, babe, I don't really feel too good. And then she was laughing, like, <laughs> me either. Um, I swear, all of a sudden, everything just went silent. Like, it felt like there was surround sound. Like, every sound i swear just it sounds so vivid it kind of like you know when you get them like um you know noise blocker earphones where you can just hear just the music and block everything that's kind of what i felt like in the room like it proper just felt like all i can hear was every detail in the room so the room started swaying a bit more now and yeah i was feeling sick a little bit like a little bit nauseous and then i sat there and then all of a sudden i was like whoa whoa i was like whoa the pillows we had pillows on the bed this is what the pillows did right in front of me the pillows mounted elevated elevated from the bed went up all the way to the ceiling so i was like whoa i was like babe whoa whoa, whoa. it felt like you know when you're on an airplane and you're amongst the clouds that is literally what I felt like. I felt like I was on the bed. I was amongst all the pillows. Every, all the pillows were surrounding me. I was, like Everything just felt like it was in 3D. I just felt like I was in some Matrix game, I swear. And the sound. And every time like my ex moved or something, say she tried to adjust herself, I can hear every sound. Like, it was so bizarre. My, my sound, I don't know what decibel percentage or number it must have went up to, but I can hear everything in that room. Every movement, I swear I heard. And she must have moved. And I can hear like the rustling of the bed sheet. You know, if she like scratched her head, I can hear her fingernails against her scalp. It was that insane. And then I started getting pins and needles, like no cap. Like, so my left leg was hanging off the bed and it started locking up, like proper felt like I started getting like a cramp in my hip or something. It started locking and my toes started getting cold. I started getting like cold sensations down. I was like, Babe, I don't feel good. And she was like, get up. I was like, no, I can't walk. She's like, let me help you get up. She got up. I was like, no, no, stop. Stop moving. Stop moving. So at this point, every movement physically pained my body. I was in so much pain. Like at this point, my left hip felt like it was locked. I was like, I can't move my leg. She's like, you can. Just, you just have to try. It's in your head. I was like, it's not in my head. I can't move my leg. I started ticking. I was like, I can't move. Like I said, I can't move. I was like, let's call the police. She was like, no. I was like, let's call the police. Like this is this isn't right. I was like, give me my phone. I was like, where's my phone? I grabbed my phone. I was like, the numbers everywhere. So I was like, this. Nine. Nine. Every time I push that button, I can hear what I'm touching. Nine. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, this is the Majesty Hammers Lens. And um, what's your Majesty call? I was like, I need the police. I'd be so stupid. I was like, I need help. I need help. I'm, I'm, I'm in danger. And then, they were, I don't even know what they said. They said something. I was like, I don't feel good. And my ex was like, no, 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 like, hang up. Um, so she took my phone and I like, hung up and I was like, babe, I'm going to die. All I thought in my head was, I'm going to be like this for 72 hours because I watched that stupid YouTube tutorial earlier. And then at one point, I was so scared. I said to my ex, let's ask Rob, let's ask Rob for help. So Rob was one of my ex's um, housemates. This guy was a proper crackhead. Whenever I used to see him, he always used to be like twitching, itching himself, his eyes were always red. He was, this guy was, I don't know what, he used to smoke or take, but this guy was a, a super known crackhead. But him and my ex, they did not get along. So my ex was like, no, absolutely not. We are not asking this guy for help. So I was like, let's call the ambulance. I was like, babe, I can't be. She's like, you need to calm down. In my head, I thought as high as I was, still smart girl i was like i'm gonna panic go into shock and die i do not want my death to be due to frigging edible 
that I didn't even know anything about. I was just like, how am I going to go out to a frigging brownie? To Aunt Betty's brownie? So I was like, nah, nah, man. I was like, let's call the ambulance. Call the ambulance now. Call the woman. Got onto the phone. I was like, listen, oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. You need to come and get me. She's like, oh, what's your majesty? It's a casualty breathing. I was like, oh, I'm just about breathing. You need to come and get me. I'm going to die. She's like, um, um, she was, I think she started panicking a little bit. She was just basically asking me all these questions like, um, how many breaths and all this stuff. I was just thinking, listen, I'm, I'm dying. I took something and you need to come and get me. Handed the phone to my ex anyway. So I think I can't deal with this right now. They started answering her questions. They're like, we're going to be there in two hours. I was like, two hours. I took the phone back. I was like, Barbara, you need to come and get me because I'm going to die. And if I die, it's going to be on your head. I was like, I said, I don't feel well. I don't feel good. And you need to come and get me now. She's like, oh, we sent out dispatchers and they'll come in 10 hours or whatever. I was like, oh, I just left it as that, right? And I sat there again. My, my hip was locked up. I was feeling sick. I was like, babe, I'm going to be sick. Guys, this girl, my ex, she, I commend her. She should have went to the Olympics. This girl... Got up in her high state, dived to the bin, grabbed it, put it in the next hand, dived towards me as I was just about to chuck up, caught it all in the bin. I started throwing up, being sick, the brownie was coming up. And after a bit, yeah, I felt okay. I started feeling okay. So I called the ambulance back. I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, I, I was just panicking and, um, you know, I, I, I had a panic attack. But I, I, I'm okay now. They're like, okay, so we're going to cancel it. I was like, yeah, sure. I'm so sorry. Remember I told you I took brands at different intervals. That was still hitting my system. Everything started progressively getting worse. I called the ambulance again. I was like, Barbara, please come back. I was like, please. Uh, I said I was panicking, but I, I'm not. I took something and you just need to come and help me. They were like, asking the same things again. Um, are you breathing? I was like, I'm breathing. Girl, I'm breathing, but please, can you just come back? Because I, I don't feel good. I'm sorry, Barbara, but please just come back. And then... They're like, okay, same thing. We're going to send two, two hours for a dispatcher's team, whatever. I was like, two hours? Like, you need to come now? Because I don't feel good. Like, you just need to come now. Anyways, hung up on her. I thought, no, no, no. Who, who can I call? Who can I call? I need help. Because I thought, I'm not going out. My death is not going out to Aunt Betty's brownies. I thought, I am better than that. Everything I've worked hard for in life to get to this point, a brownie ain't taking me out. Aunt Betty, try harder next time. I called my mate, because she's a GP, called about 15 times, 3am in the morning, she went answering. I thought, no, 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 who can I call next? Call my best mate, so my best mate works for drug and alcohol services. I thought, she works with the youth, the youth that abuse drugs, they want to do anything with their life. I thought, I'm not in that category, but I felt like it at that time. Called her, she was sleeping. And then at one point, like, my ex started panicking, she started crying. I was crying, we both were scared, because after I called the police, she was worried that they were going to come, and, you know, she was going to get in trouble, I was going to get in trouble, trouble, career done, everything done, like, we were just so scared. So I was like, you know what, babe, I love you. I'm going to take the right for both of us, just run, just leave the house, just go, just go. And she was so high, like, where am I going to go? I was just like, just go, just, there's a tree, let them come, I'll take the right. You run, hide behind a tree. And then I'll text you that you can come back to the house. And she's just like, no, she's like cram. I was like, just, just run, just run. We didn't know what to do. And I was like, you know what? I know. Let me pray. Let me, that's it. I'm going to pray. I was like, please, babe, just leave, just leave. Just, just go, out, go, go out the room. Please just let me pray. Okay. So she gingerly walked out the room, locked the door. I was literally like this. God, please. Please, God, I know. Um, please, if you get me out of this, I'll never be gay again. Just please, just help me, God. I was like, please. I don't want no one to know. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get arrested. I don't want to. I don't want to go to jail. I was like, I don't even want to die. Like, please, like, I've worked too hard to die at this moment in this house with this crackhead next door. I said, babe, I can't stay in this state for three days. Like, I'm itching. I'm, I was doing this at this point. I was like, I'm, I'm itching. I feel itchy. I'm, I'm twitching. I, I, I can't do this. I was like, I need to call my mum. She's like, Abby, don't do that. If you know my parents, my parents, yeah? It don't, it don't ride with them. It don't ride with them. It's not in our household. We don't do them things there. We don't do them things. So I called my mum. I was like, mum. I'm a big age. I was like, mum, you need to come and get me. I ate, I ate something. I don't feel good. She's like, what did you eat? It's like 4 a.m. in the morning at this point. I was like, I don't know, but I ate something. I got food poisoning. Like, you need to come get me. She woke up my dad. And she's like, can, can you just stay there? So I was like, mum.
Mom, when do I ever call you at 4 a.m.? If I've called you, this is important. Mom, mom, you're not listening to me. Guys, I love my mom. I speak to my mom with respect. But at this point, I don't think she understood the severity of the situation and how serious it was in my head. I was like, I'm going to die. Your child, your only daughter, is going to die if you don't come. Mom, when do I ever call you? Mom! Gave her the address and everything. They're on her way. Don't know what happened now, but I think me and my ex must have just passed out. <gasps> Woke up next minute. Boom, 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 boom. Sign banging, knocking on my door. It was my parents. At this point, I had no top on. Just boxes. Hair half done, looking homeless. I took the bed sheet, wrapped it around me. I was like, babe, I'm going. She was high. She was like, okay, she was confused. I staggered down the stairs. My parents were there. They embraced me in their arms with all this love, care, affection and attention. Put me in the car. They were like, I said, I need to go to hospital. Take me to the emergency services because I need to check my heart. Anyways, passed out in the car still. Got there. My mum walked me in. There was this Irish lady there. My mum came into the room with me. I was trying to be quiet. I was trying to be quiet. And walked in. An Irish lady was there. I was like, basically, I, I took something. She was like, what was that? I was thinking. My mum's right there. I was like, I think I took something, I'm not sure what I ate. I think, you know, I think someone put something in my food and spiked me or something. She's like, so, so you think you're talking a substance? I was thinking, I don't know, be quiet. My mum's there looking at me. You know them ones where you just, you go to the GP and they ask if you're sexually active, you don't want to say that in front of your parents. Anyways, I sat there and my mum was like, are you going to pump her stomach? I just thought, oh God, let the ground open up and swallow me and her and, and the whole hospital. It's freaking so embarrassing. Anyways, and she was basically like, you, you, you just need to go home and sleep it off. You just need to sleep it off and you'll, and you'll be fine. They're like, why won't you pump her stomach? My mum was thinking. She's like, um, we don't pump stomachs, you know. Da -da 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 -da, whatever she said to my mum. I said, I'm not leaving until someone checks my heart. So I was like, okay. They sent me to this Filipino nurse, this guy in his room. I walked into there, staggered. Boxers, guys. No t-shirt, just a bed sheet around me. Hair half done. Socks on. I didn't even put shoes on. Socks on. Walked in. The guy's like, hello, how are you? He's like, uh, I need to see your chest so I can put these things in your chest. I was like, okay. Whoosh. Whipped open the sheet. Titties out, flipping, flopping everywhere. The guy looks so awkward, guys. One titty going to the left, one titty going to the right. My guy put all these stickers on my chest to check my heart activity. And he's like, okay, you can put the sheet down now. I was like, no, never. Just left my chest out open bare. He got a show, mate. He got a show. <laughs> I was just there swaying. It's like, it's okay, you can put your heart down, we're just going to do the thing now. I was like, mm, no, no. Carried on, checking my heart activity. <laughs> He's like, you're going to be fine, go home and rest and drink plenty of water. My parents took me home uh, and I slept, man, slept. Woke up, still high, the next day. I'm like, 72 hours stuck in my head hey right, guys listen i cannot be the only one i cannot be the only one that has had a bad trip with edibles never again i have not eaten brown until this day i never will i'm never gonna try any substance anything again never again you won't catch me doing that it was the worst experience of my life i thought i was genuinely going to die abby one aunt betty's zero yeah but listen, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, share.